Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before I start this program, just want to let you know that this is not a lecture. We are here to seek knowledge. We are here to learn something about the fundamental, about one of the pillars of Islam. And we all know that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us that it is compulsory upon every male and female to seek knowledge. So Alhamdulillah, we want to learn anything we need, to, we want to practice on anything we need to learn about. And Alhamdulillah, because Hajj is once in a lifetime, Alhamdulillah, you can find the best package in the town or the, or the best budget package as well. But if your Hajj is not done according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that money is just gone, your Hajj will be done according to the way you have gone there. But you will not get the essence of Hajj because you haven't practiced upon it. So you need to learn before you go. And one session is not going to teach you everything. So we need to at least put your effort here that listen very carefully. Do not ask me any questions in the middle, please. If there's any questions you have, write them down and ask me at the end. There will be a question answer session right at the end. So brothers and sisters, both of you, if there's any questions for you, keep answering at the end. For my sisters, just want to let you know as well, we are going to go through some Masail here as well. But for your personal Masails, what you have, my personal advice to you all, my sisters, is that please do and go and see some Alimas in the town as well and sit with them and talk to them about your personal uh, issues as well, like your periods and how you have to do all your rituals about that. Inshallah, the Alimas in the town who's already been hurt so many times or, or at least once as well, they will at least guide you, Inshallah. So please do go to them as well. They will help you as well, Inshallah. As you can see, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the presentation says that Hajj is invitation, by invitation only. So basically, Allah's Messenger, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, after building the Kaaba, you have heard the story so many times by Shaykh Farooq sahab and our other ulamas, that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, after building the Kaaba, Allah told him to invite the people for Hajj. And Alhamdulillah, Allah said that he invited and all of us, 
Alhamdulillah, huwa in alami arwa. We said labbaik and Alhamdulillah, we are going for Hajj Yamin. So this is a great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is calling you. So this is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has given some virtues as well. For example, one Hajj and one Umrah you do. So in the middle, whatever sins you do, minor sins, they are forgiven. Another hadith narrated by Abu Nair that Man Whoever goes for Hajj and he does his Hajj according to the Sunnah method, then what is going to happen? He will come back as though he's clean, he's just born today. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make our Hajj like that. It's called Hajj Mabrur. What does Hajj Mabrur mean? Hajj Mabrur is that Hajj where you take the consideration of every faras, every wajib, every sunnah, every mustahab, and every act, nafal act. You do it properly, inshallah, your hajj will become hajj mabrur. There's one sign. Another sign of hajj mabrur is your life changes. Before, mashallah, you are not punctual in your salah. Now, mashallah, you're reading your salah. Understand? Your attitude wasn't that good. Now, mashallah, after, after meeting so many different people throughout the globe in that in hajj, you had some patience in you. You were dealing in a be best manner. Now, alhamdulillah, you have trained yourself. You have become a good man. Huh? The wives are going to look at you as well and say, mashallah, our husband has changed as well. Mashallah, bara acha banda ho gaya hai. Understand? And then the same vice versa as well. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. A hajj free from sin and, uh, you know, obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hajj performed with intention of seeking Allah's pleasure. A hajj performed according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Hajj is easy. <clears throat> now I just want to go through some checklist. What exactly do you need? Obviously, you all have a passport copies. That's done. Your e-tickets nowadays. There is no such thing as the flight tickets. You need a passport, a flight tickets, and a Hajj draft. There was a time when they were giving out Hajj drafts. Now, from last year or the previous year, they've stopped that. So it's basically e-drafts now. So your money is paid. And already your agent, with the money when you pay, the agent has to already been paid and the money's already gone to Saudi Arabia, it's in the government's bank, and that's your, your house drafts already done. So you will only have a code number and your group leader will know about it. So that is done, Alhamdulillah. Secondly, I would advise you, all of you, to at least make a copy of your passport, photocopy of your passport, you know, where the picture is. So at least in case you lose it or something happens, at least you have some documents with you to help. Vaccinations, make sure you see a doctor because they know what vaccinations you need before you fly and get a certificate from them and keep that in your passport all the time or, or any document which you have because they might ask you at Jeddah airport. Ihram and slippers in your hand luggage. Now this is for brothers. Brothers, please put your, if you're flying directly, for example, if you're flying from Heathrow airport straight to uh, Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, that's fine. You're going to put your Arab on at Heathrow airport anyway. But if you are flying via another country, then <coughs> make sure you carry your, uh, your, your Arab and a pair of slippers in your hand luggage. Don't put in your suitcase. Because I, I, I noticed once, mashallah, it happened that, you know, a person came to me and said, Mawlana uh, uh, there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, Mawlana, I forgot my Arab in the suitcase. So what shall I do now? I said, I cannot give you my piece because then they'll start looking at my biceps. So what's going to happen? So what, the best thing I can do is tell you to go to your news agent. Mashallah, they'll give you a newspaper. So the brother, brothers use your common sense. This is a common sense thing. You put your ihram and a pair of slippers in your hand luggage, please. Money, 50 pound notes, that doesn't mean the Saudi government is going to give you more reals. It's the same. It's just carrying less money. That's why I'm just telling you to take 50 pound notes. Few reals. You can get them from Post Office or Thomas Cook or any other places you can get it or, or you can get, ask your agent as well. The reason I'm saying because when you arrive in Jeddah, you're going to be there for a few hours and you will get hungry. And you know when Haji is hungry, they're angry. Understand? So, uh, you know, when you are hungry, mashallah, you need food. So make sure you take some pastries and some burgers as well in your hand luggage, okay? Not in your suitcase. So at least when you are there, when you arrive in Jeddah airport, you can open up, mashallah, share it. Make sure you look after the Maulanas. And a few riyals. <coughs> few riyals, the reason is, imagine I didn't take any riyals. And I'm going to buy a cup of tea. Now I'm going to my next person, I'm saying, can I borrow one riyal or two riyals? 
वो कहेंगे यार ये मौलवी तो आज से मांग रहा है छः हफ्ते पता नहीं क्या होगा अंडरस्टैंड सो प्लीज फॉर अल्लाह से फॉर अल्लाह से कैरी सम रिया ओके फोकल साइज कुरान माशा यू ओर वॉट स्मार्ट फोन योर कुरान इज ऑन द फोन इज वेल अलहमद लाला तो इज गुड टू हैव अ कुरान फॉर विथ यू इस्लामिक बुक्स यू विल बी गिवन अ सेट ऑफ बुक्स फॉर ऑफ यू especially those brothers and sisters who are going for hajj please take it rest of you please don't take it because someone has donated those books so if you don't need it don't take it to others other people who are, i have another programs as well so i can give it out to other brothers okay <clears throat> incredible people i'll tell you all this after inshallah let's carry on don't waste more time okay these are the things you need but like for example you can you want to have a travel bag now these are for brothers sisters just put a break for a while a uh, travel clock of the sisters you need a travel clock you need a tasbi this tasbi you will get it over there it's only a one riyal tasbi in the market it's got seven beads on it it helps you in counting your tawaf uh, you can cover your eyes you cannot cover your face but while you're sleeping just covering your eyes it's like spectacles you know wearing specs so like that to just cover that eye when you're sleeping that's fine but to cover whole face in ihram is not allowed neither for the men neither for the women okay a uh, safety pin is allowed to put on your ihram you can have your slippers like that and ear plugs as well brothers so just essential you know it's not compulsory because sometimes what happens brothers your wife knows mashallah how much snow you you know in your bed so what happens there that you know when you're in the room you're four people mashallah and sometimes you might not get a good sleep so you need some ear plugs but make sure you tell your brothers to wake you up for namaz don't miss your salah one salah we read here just now <clears throat> we get the reward 27 times that same salah if we would have read it in front of the kaaba we would have got 100000 salah so look at the look at the reward allah is giving so don't miss your salah don't read them in the hotel try to read them in 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 haram <clears throat> Sisters, my advice to you as well. It is summer time now, and in Saudi Arabia, it's 45 to 50 degrees. So, Zohar time, Asr time. If you can read your salah in your hotel, that's fine. Understand? Alhamdulillah, you read your salah at home anyway. But when you are in Saudi Arabia, when you are in Haram, if you read in your hotel, you will get the same reward, inshallah. So, if you are reading in your hotel because it's too hot, Zohar time, Asr time, that's fine. Maghrib, Isha, Fajr is fine. You can go. But make sure when you go. You read your namaz when the women sit, not with your husband. Understand? In Haram Sharif, special. Okay. Sunglasses. The reason I'm telling you to take sunglasses is, you know, the flow is marble flow, and if the brightness of that, it will go in your eyes. You won't even open your eyes at all. So you need a proper sunglasses. Don't get the cheap ones. Get a good sunglasses for for this journey. You need a vest as well. So make sure there is no uh, fragrance in there. medication make sure you have some medications as well so see your doctors as well and make sure you know which medication you take you get all this stuff over there but it's better to take few things with you a packet of uh, paracetamol a packet of a few medicines take it with you it will help you there you know a toothpaste brush all that a uh, one toilet roll take this with you because you know the first day you don't even know where the shops are you don't know how to buy things at the same time so at least you got everything in a suitcase it will help you So few essential things, keep them with you. Few things, no need to take the whole, uh, you know, twenty-four four rolls with you. You will we'll get it over the inshallah. Okay. Introduction. Now the niyyah. What is your intention? Why am I going for Hajj? Am I only going because my neighbors are telling me for all this time? Why come Hajj? Me jayenge? Paise bhot ho gaye hai. Nahi nahi, gharia kharite har saal. You know, when are you going for Hajj? So are they putting pressure? Is that why I'm going for Hajj? You going for Hajj for Allah? You know, it's a duty Allah has put on you. That's why you're doing it. And make sure, brothers, don't wait for tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next year. Today I'm healthy. Next year I might not be. Today I have money. Next year I might not have. Today I'm alive. Next year I might not be. So when you get the chance, when you have the money, go for it. Don't wait. If the sisters you have the money, your husband doesn't have, don't wait for the husband. If your father or brother, if somebody is going for Hajj, you just pay your money and go with them. You don't have to wait for your husband. That until he has money, then I'll go with him. It's for us on you. You start moving. Okay. 
is as much possible about learn. Suffer, uh, preparation should be done. Holidays from work, make sure you ask your work that you're taking holidays. Don't just phone them from the airport. Uh, pay all your debts. Now, one thing you need to remember, if I owe money someone, and my salary is coming in my account, and from that salary, every monthly the installments are being paid, that's fine. But if I've taken some money from someone, and kar se hasana and haste haste rehte hai aur dene ka irada hi nahi hai then you have to be worried you make sure that you pay that money before you leave because your hajj will be just like that nothing so make sure that if you have taken money from someone you need to pay that money back before you go understand so make sure you do that okay write your will as well because we don't know if you're going to come back and uh, okay try try to choose some righteous people as well in your company Price recommendation, brothers and sisters, we live in a modern technology time now. We can find from Google Maps exactly where our hotel is and where Haram Sharif is. Many times they tell you, we can do 10 minutes ka rasta. It's only 10 minutes. And then you go there and 50 minutes and I can't see the Kaaba. Understand? Or I can't see the Haram Masjid as well. And then you're cursing your agent. What's the point? So I advise to the agents as well. If it's 20 minutes, tell them it's 30 minutes. What's the, what's the reason? You're not going to lose any customers. At least you be nice with your tongue. If that, if that customer is there in 20 minutes, he's going to give dua to you. The mashallah, he was saying 30, I made it in 20. So Alhamdulillah, be genuine and talk properly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. So food as well, ask him, are you going to get food, everything, transport, everything. You need to ask before you pay your money. And Hajj is easy. Hajj is what you make out of it. Now, we're going to talk about three types of Hajj. There are three types of Hajj. We are going to talk about Tamattu because majority of the people from United Kingdom, they do Tamattu. So I'm going to talk about Tamattu the whole way. But I'm just explaining you the three types of Hajj. Number one is Umrah, then Hajj, during the months of Hajj. So what you do, when I arrived in Saudi Arabia, <coughs> I do the Tawaf, the Kaaba, the Sayyid of Safa Marwa, shave my head, come in my normal clothes. Sisters, they cut their hair, they come in the normal clothes. Now they are in the normal clothes anyway. They are far. Now what's going to happen? When Hajj comes, the same Aram, you don't have to buy a new one from the market. You can give it straight away next day to the laundry. They'll come in the washing. You wear that same Aram on the day of Hajj. So you got two Aram's in one journey. Okay? That is called Tamatu. What is Tiran? Tiran is one Aram. So I put my Aram on from Heathrow. I don't take it out until I finish Hajj. That is called Hajj Kiran. Hajj Kiran is easy for that time if you are going more nearer to Hajj time. Okay? Hajj Ifrad is only Hajj. So if I put my Aram on and I'm not going to do Umrah now. When I arrive in Makkah, I just have to do a welcome tawaf and then I do the Sayy of Hajj. There is a Hajj Sayy. And then I just stay in Makkah with my Aram on. I don't pick up, I, I don't shave my hair until the Hajj finishes. So this is the ruling of three Hajj. So if you want to know more about this, too, please go talk to me afterwards. But mainly, it's, we're going to talk about Hajj Tamatu today. Hajj Badrat is on behalf of someone. So for example, if somebody uh, is sending you for Hajj, make sure that you have done your Hajj first. You cannot do Hajj Badal on someone, Hajj on behalf of someone. You cannot do it until you haven't done your own. So you need to understand that as well. The person who's going for Hajj, the condition is that everything will be that person who's sending you. So the time you put your ihram on, from that time the Umrah you're doing it, that is for him and the Hajj is also for him. Afterwards you can do Umrahs in the middle, that is going to be for you. But the first Umrah and the Hajj, that is going to be for that person who we're going for. So remember that ruling. You can do Urma Matamatu as well. Okay. Ihram. Now I'm just going to show our brothers how to put Ihram. Because you know our brothers don't have a habit of wearing a lungi as well. So we need to at least guide them a little bit how to put Ihram. So sisters give me two few minutes. You can also see as well because at least it will help you to teach them how to wear Ihram. So this is, these two pieces of clothing is exactly the same brothers, exactly the same. There is no difference between them, size. And you can get in the market and the, remember the material should be like this, a towel shape. Because it's going to be very hot over there. You will be sweating and this will observe your sweat. If you're going to wear, you know, those uh, uh, cotton one, 
you will sweat and then what's going to happen it will become see through understand and people will be able to see your body as well so it doesn't look good so that is why my advice to all of you is my brothers try to buy this one which is you know like a towel shape so this is how you wear it okay you take it like this make sure you're changing in Heathrow airport it doesn't mean that you change you start changing in the public huh? or in a private place okay I'm just showing you here so <clears throat> you you wear it like this number one take it one then two don't keep on going around it's not a sari and then bring it here okay I'm doing it again one time you you take it like this one then two then bring it bring it here three okay then you fold it after folding it you get a belt like this this is a hajj belt as well and it's got a wire as well mashallah we got good brothers who go for hajj as well you know they they, they, they see this mashallah they want your money so make sure you got a nice belt as well so so this is this is you put the belt on okay after putting this belt on you cover this remember cover this all the way and in this belt because you've got no pockets in here the reason of wearing this belt is you can put your mobile phone in there you can put few reals there not the ten thousand pounds you take with you don't put all of them in here uh, make sure you keep them in your uh, keep them safe with your wife like always they look after your money anyway so uh, keep the money always in in your hotel don't carry too much money while doing tawaf and you will see so many mashallah brothers coming to you that i was doing tawaf and i lost thousand pounds and thousand rupees and this and that please help me there will be so many people like that you know they can sniff you out so make sure that uh, you look after your money so few riyals 50 riyals that's enough you know few because you need it for hair cutting you need for a cup of tea or something so that's in here your badge always wear it you'll be given a badge always wear it that's your id you need your id anything happens to you that id is going to save you inshallah they will know that this person belongs to this group this is how you cover it is that and then you can fold it all right don't keep on folding it or mashallah upar aata rahega so the sucker have to be covered make sure when you're sitting your knees your knees is your sucker and you're sitting mashallah when you're sitting in a gallery sit in that manner that the person in front of you is not looking at something else you understand so make sure you cover yourself properly in your house practice this wear it move up and down walk upstairs downstairs you know jump a little bit here and there check it properly if it's safe or not because this thing you need it you don't want that you wear your hair up you're walking you're so busy in the crowd and second minute somebody's asking your brother look down and raise your hair up we don't want that to happen so make sure brothers your ihram is safe look after it properly it's your property you need to look after it second ihram is exactly the same the size is same what you do in here is you take it on the top like this like this and then wear it like this that's it you will find so many people so many people over there they're always moving around like this the right shoulder is open right shoulder when to open i will tell you when it comes besides that all the time cover yourself don't move around just like that cover yourself so this is your ihram now the reason i'm explaining here is mainly ihram is the intention it's not the it's not the clothing it's the intention because once you're in that intention you are not allowed to wear some clothes footwear these are the footwear you're going to wear because you know this bone has to be concealed to open all the time it should be open this bone here and also because you see the the wording in the books of hadith and in the books of fiqh is the bone which is coming out now there are two bones in your feet one is the ankle and one is the top bone so your ankle and the top bone should never be covered if somebody comes to me and say i want to wear sandals you need to have that kind of a sandal which does not cover your ankle and doesn't cover the top bone if that doesn't cover that's fine but if it covers that is a problem so you bought for men this is only for brothers sisters you can wear any footwear you can wear your trainers you can wear shoes but please don't wear your high heels you're not going in a club okay 
So this this is a food way as well. This is uh, my 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 advice is buy something like this, which has got a thicker sole, because we'll have a lot of walking. Make sure it's not plastic, because it's going to be too hot. So these ones I've been using, Alhamdulillah, they're very good. The sole is very good of this one. Unless you want to wear your sandals, then you'll have to do this. Your so your you know your top bone, yeah and your ankles are visible, that's fine, okay? Oh, let me go to the bags. The reason I'm showing you these bags is, when you're in Haram, you need to put your slippers somewhere, or your shoes somewhere, because you need to carry it with you all the time. You might leave it somewhere, and then you're doing your Umrah, your Safa Marwa Sai, and then you don't even know where your shoes are. So you can carry them all the time with you. So have a bag like this with you all the time. Okay, these are the correct methods of Ihram. This is Mawlana Farooq Sahib 30 years ago. Okay, so. Now, now sisters, for you, your ihram. As you can see, these sisters around here, they're covering the forehead. Sisters, when you are in ihram, you are not allowed to cover your forehead. Your forehead, the whole face has to be visible. Understand? Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she didn't cover her face while she was with the women. Whenever the men were passing by, that's time she used to cover her face, okay? Now those sisters who are doing the parda, for them they can buy a baseball cap, there is a special cap for them. You can get it from the Islamic shops, which is with a clothing as well. So they can buy that and wear it while in Ihram. After you come out from Ihram, then you can wear the niqab. But this is what you need to understand. So for you, there is no specific clothing. You can wear any color, any clothing, and one advice for you sisters as well. Many sisters, what they do, they put a kind of a little, very, very thin clothing, like a scarf inside, they tie their hair. Especially what all women used to do. And when they used to do masa, they used to do masa on top of that clothing. That is not allowed. You have to do masa on the hair. You cannot do masa on the clothing. Remember that. So sisters, you can wear any era, any color, any footwear. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Prohibition of ihram now. Once you're in ihram, some things are haram. Allah says, Fala rafasa, wala fusuka, wala jidal. Three things Allah has mentioned in the Quran. Rafas is this is what rafas means. You are married, but your, your wife is not halal for you in, in ihram, and you're not even allowed to talk about those things with your wife. Understand? You can hold her hand while you're doing tawaf, there is no problem. And then also, she'll be sitting next to you in the plane as well, Alhamdulillah. You don't change your seat at all. We, Ayram mein hai to tujhe wahan bethna hai, mein yaan bethna No, make sure you look after her. She's looking after you all this time. You look after her over there. And also, all those people who are going with you, ladies, mother, or any disabled people, please look after them. So this is good number one rule. Number two, Allah says, it is wrong to commit sin anyway, but it is haram while you are in Ayram. Okay? Uh, you don't quarrel as well because you know hajis they get angry very quickly uh, to hunt don't even think about it you'll be in prison for good uh, killing lice that is not allowed as well and applying fragrance okay before you put your air on you can put as much akhtar as you can as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala used to put perfume from Sassam's air on before he made the intention deodorants everything you can put it before once you make your intention now you're not allowed no perfume you cannot cut your nails now you cannot trim your hair, nothing, while you're in Iran. Okay. Uh, using face towels as well, you're not allowed. You can use paper towels, but not cloth towels, okay? Uh, and then wearing speech clothes as well, that is not allowed. So we already talked about these things anyway. What is permissible? You can change your Iran if need arises. Just give an example to my brothers. If you are wearing these two pieces of clothing, you are going to sleep with them as well. You saw a wet drip. Your bottom, your bottom one is burnt soil now. What are you going to do? So what you need to do is now, you go in the bathroom, have a shower, and then the top one uses as the bottom one. And the, and the bottom one just put in the washing. Or you can buy another one, or you have a spare one, use that one. So you can always change. You can buy a new one and you can wear it as well while you're in Ihram. Because Ihram is your intention, not the clothing. You can change as many Ihram as you like. Okay. To remove sheets in the shower as well, to use miswak, to wear money belt, and to cover your body. So when you go to sleep, you can cover your feet, but you cannot cover your face. Remember that. Okay. Putting on ihram. On the prayer of reaching Mecca, take a bath possible, otherwise wuzu thereafter put the ihram. Uh, perform two rakats with the intention of putting on ihram. 
Let me open all of them, then I'll explain you. And after completing the two rakats, make niya and read the tarbiyah three times. Okay, let me just go over these things first. When you put your ihram on, before ihram, you're going to have a shower at home anyway. After that, you put your ihram on. You put your ihram on, you go to the airport, read your two rakats. After reading the two rakats, don't make your intention. Please don't make your intention at the airport. You're going to make your intention in the plane. So just read your two rakats at the airport. Stay in ihram. You're still not in ihram yet because you're in the clothes, but you, your intention you haven't made yet. Once you go in the plane, you have your food. And after having your food, that's when you make your intention. When the plane is moving and the plane's destination is Jiddah. Okay? The plane is moving and the destination is Jiddah. Not Dubai, not Turkey, not Egypt. Destination is Jiddah. That's when you make your intention. So make sure. Most Arabian airlines, they tell you, they make an announcement. In one hour's time, we're going to pass the boundary. So start making, getting ready. So, you know, you'll see people changing, you know, taking out their clothes and you don't want to do in, in the plane. So please, brothers, do, wear your hair out at the airport. Okay. Now, when you make your intention in the plane, this is the intention you're going to make. Allahumma inni muridul umraka fayassirha li wa taqabbalha minni. What does that mean? Oh Allah, I intend to perform umrah, make it easy for me and accept it for me. This is the intention. You can make this intention in any language. Okay? After that, you read the Talmiyah. Let's read one time together. Rabbayk Allahumma labbayk, labbayk la sharika laka labbayk, inna alhamda wa ni'amaka laka wal mulk la sharika laka. Now this is the Talmiyah, you read three times. Okay? Now once you read the Talmiyah, now you're in Ihram. All the rules of Ihram will start now. Understand? So you need to understand that. Once you start reading, now when you're starting in the plane, when you're going to stop? When you will see the Kaaba, before starting the tawaf, That's when you stop the talbiyah. So you keep on reading the talbiyah. When you land in Jiddah, keep on reading it. When you're going to Makkah, keep on reading it. While you're in Makkah before Umrah, keep on reading it. Until you arrive near the Kaaba before the tawaf, then you stop. Then you don't read. Sisters, you read silently. Brothers, try to read loudly. Make yourself awake. Okay. Uh, these are just rules about traveling, so I don't waste more time in here. Just want to explain you a few things. Obviously, Musafir, you're a traveler. So when you're traveling, more than 15 days you're going to stay somewhere, then you don't become a Musafir, you become a Mukim. But if you're going to stay in one place for more than 15 days, then you become a Mukim. So if I go to Makkah, and I stay in Makkah for more than 15 days, I will be a Mukim in Makkah, I will be a Mukim in Mina, in Arafat, in every Muslim, I'm going to be a Mukim. But if I'm going to stay less than 15 days in Makkah, then I'm going to be Musafir everywhere. That's a rule. Now, just for your information, you're going in, the, in Hajj, you will have ulamas in your group. Please do ask them again about this Muslim. Okay. This is Mikah. You see, Mikah is a boundary. Prophet ﷺ has made a boundary. No one is allowed to cross this boundary without Ihram. There is Medina Munawwara is there, Makkah Mukarrama is there. The furthest Mikat is Medina. Prophet Sallallahu when he came from Hajj, for Hajj, he put his ihram from Sul Hulaifa. And from there he traveled all that. It took him 10 days. It takes us 10 hours today. But it took 10 days to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam traveling this. Okay? So when we come in Jiddah, Jiddah is here. Before we come from England, England is here. So we're from England when we are arriving, we're coming like this. So we will see Medina as well while we're coming. So when we come here before Jiddah, we need to be in ihram. Because Jiddah is in the boundary. So we need to be in Ihram before we land Jiddah. Hajj Tamilan, I'm just going to show you some pictures of Hajj Tamilan, how it looks like. There your plane has arrived. Then you will be coming out of the plane. You will be going through the, the customs are here. MashaAllah, we will be one of them, inshaAllah. Say Amin. Look, you see that long queue? This is the time. It's the time of Sabah. It's the time of patience. The person sitting there in the counter, he might be on his mobile phone, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, eh, on Instagram. But don't trouble him. <laughs> Understand? And don't say a word to him. Don't say, brother, uh, my passport is here. He said, yeah, hey, I know that. And tick, tick, tick. <laughs> Understand? So, or he might, just, he might just put it away, go somewhere, have a kahwa, and come back after 10 minutes. Be patient. This is what we need to learn. 
we hajis have to learn patience. And that's why we are going for hajj. Understand? If you don't have patience, then I think you shouldn't even go. Because you need to understand here. That is the first point Allah says. That is why Allah made this rule. Why did Allah say no fusuk? Fusuk means foul language. You have to control yourself. So this is our time to control. Read talbiyah. Just read talbiyah. That's the best thing. They will take your pictures as well, sisters. They will take your pictures as well. They will take our pictures as well. I don't know why. Some brothers up there need some pictures. Okay. And then you will come out. You'll take your bags. After taking your bags, you will come out from this area. There are big, massive x-ray machines here. Your bags are going to go through that x-ray machine. They want to know what you have brought to Saudi Arabia. MashaAllah. There's a Quran. But when you open the Quran, there's MashaAllah some white powder there. <laughs> May Allah save us and protect us. There are people doing that. May Allah save us and protect us. You remember, there is no other prison sentence there. There's only one sentence. Allah came. That's it. So we need to be very careful. And make sure you pack your bag yourself. Understand? Because the first question they ask you at Heathrow Airport, did you pack your bag? And you didn't. And you say, yes. Haji, you have any jhoot bola. Understand? So make sure your wife doesn't pack your bag. She is there as well. But you are there when the bag is being packed. Okay. Your bag will go outside. It will come in a trolley. So all the groups, they will be together. So make sure you stay with your group. Don't worry. Your group leader will be there for you. Inshallah. Then what's going to happen? You'll be sitting in, the, in this sitting area until, until your bus is ready. So this is a sitting area. It's got different, different colors now. You see the red color, then the yellow color, then the blue color. MashaAllah, Saudi is also going forward. You know, they have seen cricket as well now, MashaAllah. But colors are changing. I'm just worried that after 20 years, they might tell you that every, every country has to wear a union, their own country flag, Ihram, MashaAllah. Or all of us will be in a union jack. Understand? So this, this is uh, how it is. I mean, you see, it's a good, MashaAllah, they have then upgraded. So you'll be sitting there, and you'll be waiting for uh, your bus, understand? So this is the time when you, you'll get hungry, you want to eat something, you want to go to the toilets or something, but make sure you tell everyone where you're going. Okay, SIM cards, you can get it over there, there are different, different companies over there. So Bobile is there, Zane is there, STC as well, whatever good package you get, buy it. Make sure you get your SIM card from the airport. You will see those kind of places where you can buy your SIM card. Don't buy it from Mecca, there will be long queues over there. So please, if you want to buy your SIM cards, buy it from the airport, please. That's why I told you to take some riyals with you. It will help you. Okay. Transport. Your transport will be like this, or might be better than this one a little bit, and your saman will be inside. Now. There's no, they, you see the buses have changed now. They used to put saman on the top now. They don't put anything on the top now. The, everything goes in, in the under. So mashallah, you'll be one of them inshallah. Okay. This is the boundary of Haram. The boundary which I was showing you before, that was the boundary of Mikat. In the Mikat, there's another boundary which is the sacred place which is called Haram. And this is the boundary of Haram. When you, before you enter Makkah. Okay. Before you go to your hotel, you will be stopping at one place. And that is called Muhallim's office. You won't come out from the bus. You will be in your bus. Your group leader will take all your passports and they will put your passports in the Muallim's office. There will be a safe area, locked, and your passport will stay there. So don't worry about your passports, okay? They won't get lost. You will get it when you come back, okay? Because you cannot stay in that country. So they take your passports away. Or this is your hotel, mashallah, five-star hotel. Now you're in your hotel now. Now one advice I want to give you. One advice I want to give you, sisters and brothers. When you arrive in your hotel, it is going to be 24 hours from the time you left your home till the time you arrive at your hotel. At least 24 hours. You will be annoyed. You want to get out from your Ihram. You know, you want to, you want to get out. Don't hurry. Don't say, Bhai, chalo, hum to abhi ja kar, khatam kar dena hai, jaldi jaldi umrah. No. Allah is saying, have a rest. Have some food. Have a good rest. When you are ready, mentally and physically ready, that's when you go for umrah. And try to do your first Umrah after Isha. My advice is I'll do it after Isha. The reason is you're just going from England to a really hot country now. So don't just start after Zohar. Understand? Or you'll be sweating like anything. Or after Asr. Try to delay. If you're going with women, then I would advise you to do it after Isha. If only men are going, 
then I would say, try to do it just time before Maghrib, or half an hour, of, I mean, one hour before Maghrib start, inshallah. Or after Maghrib, do it, inshallah, you can do it. So you will finish it, inshallah. So this is my advice. But if you're going with a woman, then pray. One advice to my sisters, please, 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 don't start any tawaf half an hour before azan time. Half an hour before azan time, don't start any tawaf. Because you will be doing tawaf, namaz, azan will happen, especially in Makkah. In Makkah, they don't wait. Azan happens, and few minutes, jamaat starts. Understand? Because Hajj time is so much crowd, they don't wait. In Medina, you will have, mashallah, about nearly 15 minutes when the jamaat starts, or 20 minutes. In Makkah, there is no time. Prior to Hajj, there's three minutes. Isha azan done, you don't have, you haven't even read your two rakats yet, and jamaat starts. So if you are in that arounding mataf, and namaz starts, you will be standing with the brothers. Imagine you standing next to someone, you're going to violate his namaz. Understand? So, and you cannot read your namaz if a woman is in front of you or next to you. So brothers, you need to be careful about these things as well. Don't shout there to them. I see it so many times. Brothers, you know, shouting at sisters, you know, telling, oh, get out of your go, go, haja, haja. Try nicely. Talk to them nicely, inshallah. There are places in haram designated specially for women. And, you know, they can go there and sit with the women and read namaz. Okay. Now, just to familiar all of you, before you leave your hotel, from your hotel to Haram Sharif, there will be a route. Get familiar with the road. Check all the shops on the side and left. You know where you're going. And when you come back as well, every gate has got a name and has got a number. So if you are entering from Babi Abdul Aziz every day, you know that I will come out from Babi Abdul Aziz and this is a meeting point where we're going to meet up. Understand? So you need to get familiar with the first things. Just coming out from here, if you look outside, you'll see the tower clock. Bigger clock in the wall, right in front of you. Understand? So this is where it is. And then <clears throat> these are the gates anyway, just two pictures. You see there? So as you come out from Babi Abdul Aziz, that tower clock is just here. So you, you'll see just there. Now, one advice to all of you, brothers and sisters. If you are living in these hotels here, then Namaz time, you need to come earlier anyway. But if you are behind this area in Misfala, then you'll have to come a little bit earlier. Because if you come late, they block the roads, and then you won't be able to come from this area to Haram. You will have to come all the way here in this new section. Your Namaz will be done in the new section, but you will have to be walking a long walk. Understand? So try to go for namaz early. It's not Jami Masjid that you know when if Manana Farooq says Allahu Akbar there, that's when I come out of my house. No. It is Haram Sharif. You have to be 15, 20 minutes before Azan, you need to get out. So that's when you, you will be able to be near the Kaaba Sharif, inshallah. When you see the green lights, that means there is space in there. If this lights turn red, then sorry, there is no space. Look for the other exit. Whenever you enter the Haram Sharif, this is the dua for both Harams. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Rabbi gfilli dunubi wa akhtali ababa rahmat. This is for Makkah as well, this is for Medina as well. Whenever you enter this masjid, you read this, you read this dua. Now, first view of the Kaaba. You don't want to start your tawaf now, but you want to see the Kaaba and make your dua. That's fine. Go and do that. So go in an area where the people are not doing tawaf just before that. That area you stand there, look at the Kaaba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, whoever sees the Kaaba first time, any dua he makes, that dua is accepted. Imam Bonifa Rahmatullah alayhi student was going for Hajj. And he came to Imam Bonifa, he said, Imam Sahib, I'm going for Hajj, what dua shall I make? He said, make this dua that Allah, wherever I make dua, Allah accept that dua. Imagine if that dua is accepted, Alhamdulillah. Understand? So this is what we need to do is we need to look at the Kaaba, make dua, cry that Allah until today I was looking at the picture, I was looking at the videos and today I'm looking at the Kaaba right in front of me. So you need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua for the whole Ummah of Rasulullah Sassam. Just injecting here, to, uh, just for my sisters, if you are in your period, sisters, you still can be in ihram. You have to put your ihram on, you have to make the intention from home. You are going to put in your ihram. You will be in ihram all the way until you become pak. You have to have a shower. You have to clean yourself. And then you do your umrah afterwards. So you are not allowed to go only one place 
and that is in the masjid. And that is why you are not allowed to go in the mata, in the, in the in, sorry, in Haram Sharif Masjid. So until you don't become taf, you're not allowed. So the husband, he can go and do his tawaf, he can go and do his umrah, he can come out from his ihram, and he can join you when you're doing your umrah. He can do as a nafal tawaf, and then he can wait for you when you're doing your safa marwa. Understand? He doesn't have to walk another walk, understand? He's already done it, but he can wait for you while you're doing your safa marwa. You can do safa marwa alone, and you can do tawaf alone as well. You don't need a mahram to do tawaf. But it's better to go a few women together or, few, or with your husband, please. <coughs> okay. This is the first view of the Kaaba. Just when you see the Kaaba, you know, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, you should say that. This is an extra dua if you want to read it. But mainly, mainly is this and then make any dua you want. Okay. This semicircle wall is called Hatim. This is called Maqam Ibrahim. And that's the door of the Kaaba. And there is that corner as well, the Hajar as well, the black stone. The corner before that is called Rukne Yamani. And between the door and the Hajar as well, the place is called Multazam. Multazam means to, to join your, yourself with the Kaaba. Understand? Like a small child hugs the mummy. Understand? That's how Multazam is, that area. But it's impossible to go there. Understand? One advice to all of you, a lot of perfume they put on the Kaaba. So be careful about that. When you doing tawaf, how will you know where Hajar Aswad is? So you can see that green light over there. There's a green light right there, there's a green light over there, there's a green light over there. That green lights are right opposite the Hajar Aswad. So while you're doing tawaf, you will know where Hajar Aswad is coming. Okay, that's a sig signal for you. In here as well, you can see the Hajar Aswad signal is there. It's there as well, it's there up as well, it's on the top as well. So all the places there's a green light. You can do tawaf on the first floor as well. There's tawaf on the second floor. There's tawaf on the roof as well. So there's a plenty of places to tawaf as well. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about the crowd. Too much crowd, go in, the, go in this area. The escalators as well straight takes you to Mata. These escalators, if you go to them, it will take you right at the ground floor and just straight towards the Kaaba. Okay, that's Hazari Aswad. This area is called Mata. The reason it's called Mata because that's when you do Tawaf. That's why it's called Mata. Now, just so for your information, brothers and sisters, this man over here, what's he doing? He's putting Akhtar on the Kaaba. So there's a lot of perfume. And I've seen a video myself. Put, they put a lot of perfume on the, on the case of Hajar Aswad as well and in, on the Hajar Aswad as well. So what's the ruling now? While I'm in Ihram, I'm not allowed to make sure that you touch with this perfume or touch myself with this perfume. So while you are doing the tawaf with ihram, don't touch the kaaba. You can do it afterwards. After you're out of your ihram, mashallah, go and hug the kaaba. But while you're in ihram, while you're in your ihram, please don't touch the kaaba. There is a, this is the height, you know, it's, it's that height. When you're standing, this is how you, I can touch the, the, the doorstep. No, I still have to go one foot up to touch it. This is inside the Kaaba. You never know we're gonna get a chance to that. But just leave me. just for your information, I got this picture. Okay. Alright. This is called Hatim. Whoever reads namaz inside here, you can only read Nafal Namaz in here. Farad Namaz they don't read here. Whoever reads Nafal Namaz in here is as though you read Namaz inside here. Understand? So reading in Hatim is reading as though you read inside the Kaaba. You will get a chance if you try, but you will be like a sardines over there. Understand? There's so many people there. Okay. All right. Now we're going for Umrah. There are four things in Umrah. You already in Iran, that is Faras. You're going to do Tawaf of the Kaaba for Umrah, that is Faras. You're going to do the Safa Marwa Sa'i, that is Wajib. And you're going to shave and trim your hair, that is Wajib. Okay. Now I just want to do a few masais over here. Let me open it so I can show you. Number one is for eyes of tawaf. What is the purpose of tawaf? The niyyah. Intention is compulsory. While you're doing your tawaf, you have to have intention that I'm doing this tawaf for my umrah. Secondly, the tawaf in Masjid al Haram, not in Bin Daud shopping center and doing some tawaf around and doing personally tawaf. Personally means 
everyone who can go to the Kaaba, they have to do tawaf. If you can go on a wheelchair as well, you have to do tawaf yourself. Understand? The only person who can tell other one is if you are completely bedridden. Understand? That's different. But or else, every one of us have to do it our tawaf ourselves. Not anyone else doing for us. Wajib of tawaf is wuzu. That is why, sisters, if you are in your menstruation day, you're not allowed to do tawaf until you become far. Wuzu. There are wuzu places inside the haram. Inside the haram. You don't even have to go to outside. Inside. So, while you come out from the mataf, you don't climb the stairs, don't even go in escalators, just keep on walking in the same area inside. There are wuzu khanas everywhere. Understand? Inside. They're built in wuzu khanas. So, you just do your wudu there and come back and start the tawaf. Now, just for the rule. If you did your four rounds and you are in the fifth round and you broke your wudu, then you go into your wudu, come back, start your fifth round, sixth round, seventh round. But if you broke your wudu in the first four rounds, then you'll have to start all again. Okay? So remember this rule. Okay. Because four rounds are compulsory. Remember that rule. Okay. Start from the right, anti clockwise, including the hatim, uh, to complete tawaf. Seven times going round is one tawaf, not seven tawafs. Seven times going round the Kaaba makes one tawaf. Okay. Two rakats after tawaf is also wajib. And sunnah of tawaf is, is istilam of Hajar Aswad, kissing the Hajar Aswad, or touching it, or first uh, flying kiss, ramal, first three rounds. Now I'll explain you one by one. Let me go further. Okay. Arrive at the masjid. When I arrive in the masjid, I'm going to read the dua. The first thing I'm going to read the dua before I start my tawaf. And what is the dua? Allahumma inni uridu tawaf of Baitul Haram, Sabat Aswatin Allah Ta'ala. Allah make it easy for me and accept it for me. This is, I'm intending to do seven rounds, make it easy for me. Ittiba, sorry. Now, this is what I want to show you, brothers. Therefore, brothers, until now you are covering yourself. So, this is you do. Don't, don't start doing it in the crowd. Well, outside the crowd, before even you join the crowd, before you even join the people who are doing tawaf, get ready first. So what you do is, you are wearing your hair out like this. Now this is the time when you open your right shoulder. When you open your right shoulder and you can put a safety pin here or you can put this hair out like this and keep it like this. You keep this shoulder open in all seven rounds. When you finish your seventh round, and you find a place where you're going to read your namaz, then that area, you open it up and cover yourself. Understand? Don't let after finishing your tawaf, people are there in the crowd and start doing changing there and beating up this guy and that guy. No. You cover, you go in a place, secure place, then you cover yourself again. So only in seven rounds, that is called iddiba. Remember that. Okay. Hajar Aswad, kissing this stone. I just want to explain to you the four scenarios. Number one. If I'm going to go and kiss this stone, I'm going to put my staff into danger. Understand? Because there are so many people there. Now you need to think about it. You're in a hurry. Okay? Now imagine in that crowd, you've been waiting for your turn and pushing up. Next minute, you don't know where your haram is. Understand? So for Allah's sake, don't even bother going there. Number two, touching it. Same again. Number three, the ruling is you need a stick. Now wow, you're going to wait there, you're going to say, okay, shall I put my stick now? Or, by that time, you'll go for another round as well. So the last thing and the better thing is, from far away, you just go like this. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then just kiss your hand. Right? Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then kiss your hand. That's the Okay? And remember, hajar aswad alhamdulillah, I have kissed hajar aswad alhamdulillah, without one single person around me. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So I know Hajar Aswad that I had to go like this, this much bend. So Hajar Aswad is here. So where is Hajar Aswad? In my this height. So you'll see people doing like this. You'll see people doing like this. When I got sugar, I got all action. Understand? So the best thing is this is where it is. So this is what you do. Just do like this. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And just kiss your hand and start walking. That is what you need to do. This is Rukna Yaman. You don't have to touch it unless you are doing your Rabbah Tawaf, then it's fine. Just, you know, touch it, that's fine. Okay. Now, now listen very carefully because I want to explain to you about Tawaf. 
Because tawaf is only I'm going to explain you one time, and that is the tawaf for every nafal tawaf as well. Okay. Before I start my tawaf, now I'm ready. I'm in the crowd. I made my intention. I just come near Hajar Aswad. For example, I just give you an example. Uh, take it that that speaker over there, that mic is the Hajar Aswad. That's the best Hajar Aswad is. Okay. So I'm ready now, and I'm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to face towards Hajar Aswad, and I'm going to raise my hands. Just till my ears one time in the beginning, as though we read namaz. So just one time, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah ilham. Okay, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah ilham. That's one time, and then straight away, I'll do like this: Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, kiss my head and start going. So right at the beginning, I'm ready now. So I'm looking at the Hajar Aswad, and I'm going Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah ilham, and then I say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then I start my tawaf. Okay, so this is what you need to do in the beginning for all of us. Okay, then you say Bismillah Allah. All the rounds when you come to Hajar Aswad, you say Bismillah Allahu Akbar. Ramal, what is Ramal? Ramal is like walking like a soldier. Okay, you only walk like a soldier if there is space over there. If there's a crowd, then don't walk, just walk normal. Okay, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He walked with the Sahaba Ikram like a soldier, taking out the chest and walking like this. You know, not jumping around and not, you know, marathon and running around. Just walking like a soldier, like a brave man. That's how you need to walk in the first three rounds. Only in the first three rounds. After that, you walk normal pace. Okay? That is also Sunnah. If there's a crowd, then leave it. Okay. In Tawaf, there are some duas. I'll just look at this dua first and I'll tell you where to read it. This is from the Quran and from Sunnah. It is mentioned by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he read this dua from Rukne Yamani to Hajar Aswad. From Rukne Yamani to Hajar Aswad, he used to read this dua. Okay. Now look at this picture because I'm going to explain the whole tawaf here. So you come here, you look at the Hajar Aswad, you say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah, Ilham, and straight away Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And then you start. You go around here, all the way around the Hatim, and then you come back. So you, this is like a like a brisk walk, like a soldier. Then you come. This is only for brothers, not for sisters. So sisters, you don't need to walk like a soldier. You just walk normal walk. Okay? This Ramal is only for brothers. So you come here all the way, then you come to Rukne Yamani. From Rukne Yamani till Hajar Aswad, Prophet Sallallahu did not do Ramal. Because the non-Muslims that time they were sitting in that area, they couldn't see the Sahaba and Prophet Sassam. So Prophet Sassam, when he, they arrived there, they said, all right, Sahaba, just normal walk now. So this area you weren't able to do, forget, forget, forget walking like a soldier, you weren't able to walk normally as well. Because it, it's like a, it's like, you know, junction, junction 10 to junction 8, M6, understand? It's like bumper to bumper, that's how it is. So this area is like that. So when you are in this area, you're going to read Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasanata Wa Fil Akhirati Hasanata Wa Kira That is from the Hadith. Rest of the chapter, you can read any duas. Any duas. Read the third kalima, read the fourth kalima, read Durus Sharif in one, one round, read Yasin if you know it, read any surahs if you know it, any duas you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while doing the Then you come here, you stop here, you kiss. Now, one rule when you are doing tawaf of the Kaaba, you are not allowed to look at the Kaaba. When you are doing the tawaf of the Kaaba, don't look at the Kaaba. Look down, just look forward and keep on walking. Don't look right, don't look left, don't keep on looking here and there. Just keep on looking and concentrate on your, on your Umrah. Because on your tawaf, that is an ibadah. You are not there for window shopping, you are there to do an ibadah. Understand? You can talk to someone, there is nothing wrong not to talk to someone. Prophet ﷺ told someone to talk while they were doing tawaf. So you can talk. Imam Bukhari has got a chapter as well in Bukhari Sharif. That you know, while doing tawaf, can you talk or not? So while talking is allowed, but not talking about worldly things. Tawaf karne ke baad, bindaud jayenge, labbeg, albeg jayenge, khani ke liye. No, all these things. Talk about some religious stuff. Okay, some good things. So just walking around the Kaaba. Have a respect for that place. If you are with your wife, try to keep her in front of you. Understand? Because all the men and women are doing tawaf together. There's a lot of intermingling there. You know, people will be pushing you, please don't push anyone. You know, they, they'll do anything with you, please, for Allah's sake. I, I, you know, I have experienced myself, you know, somebody was punching on my back, you know, and I, I like that, I couldn't see anyone at the back. 
And then suddenly the punching is still going on. And then suddenly he found out a sook lady was behind me telling me to get up from the way. I said, Tee, ya Allah, jau. Just that. So this, this is how it is. People will beat you up as well. You say, Allah, Tee, ya, or pitai karo. So this will happen. Things will happen, but you don't push anyone. You know? So keep your wife secure in front of you. So when you're doing tawaf, okay? So then you come here. This is the only time you look at the Kaaba. You just turn, say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then you stop. Go around all the way, then you come here. Stop here, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Then you go all the way around here, stop here. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Then all the way around again, stop here, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. All the way around, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Then Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Seven rounds are finished. How many times did you kiss the stone? Eight times you kiss. You started with one, and when you end up your seventh, you kiss eight times. Okay? So you kiss eight times. So eight times already done. Alhamdulillah. After you finish this, after you finish your tawaf, then you go behind Maqam Ibrahim. Now, Maqam Ibrahim is just there. Doesn't mean that you start reading the mass just there. There'll be a lot of people doing tawaf. You're going to stop them. So try to look for a place where people are not doing tawaf. And people are sitting down, reading the mass. Read your two rakats over there. This is how the footprint is in Maqam Ibrahim. It's been there for the last 5,000 years. Okay, just behind Maqam Ibrahim, you'll find this kind of area where you can face towards the Kaaba, is that way. You read the Kaaba and just behind, you see the Zamzam water is there. So you go and have some Zamzam water afterwards. So after you finish your Tura class, go and have, drink some Zamzam water, pull the glasses out, the water is there, or you can, you can, Get some water from this kind of cans as well. This is the dua you read before you drink some of the water. Allahumma inni asaluka ilma nafi wa rizqa wasi wa shifa min kulli da'in wa sakmin bi rahmatika ya rahimin. This is a dua. It's a very powerful dua. Try to read that and learn that dua before before you drink some of the water. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever reads any dua before drinking some of the water is accepted. Okay, after you finish, you will find some signs over there where to go for Sa'i. Safa Marwa Sa'i. You can ask someone. Toilets are completely outside the building, so you'll have to go completely outside. Okay. Now, for Tawaf, there's a ground floor Tawaf, there's a basement Tawaf, ground floor Tawaf, first floor Tawaf, second floor Tawaf, third floor Tawaf. So, there's so many places to do Tawaf as well, and so many places to do Safa Marwa as well. Now, when you come to Safa, you're going to climb the mountain, face towards the Qibla, and then you're going to say, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Read Duru Sharif, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah make it easy. And then proceed towards Mina, I mean Marwa. Okay. Now, these are the green lights where you'll have to, I'll explain you when it comes. Let me just go forward, just showing you some things again. Okay, so this is the mountain, Mount Safa. And he, he, they have covered this. While you're standing here, you see this is the crowd, all these are the people. While you're standing here, you face that way, because that way is the Kaaba. You face that way, you make the dua, after that you walk this way, and that's where the Marwa direction is. So you will be coming this way and start walking towards Marwa. Understand? So this is how Marwa is. You see the people doing Safa Marwa, all this crowd. These are the green lights where brothers, you have to jog. Sisters, you don't have to jog, please. So remember the ruling. Only brothers will jog in this area. Sisters, you just walk normally. Brothers, you can wait for them, for your sisters. Once they pay, but then you can, they can join you. This is the daytime picture of the green light area and this is the night time okay when you come to Marwa you stop again make dua before you go to Safa mountain from Safa from Marwa you're going towards Mar from Marwa you're going towards Safa okay now now look at this diagram because I want to show you here so after you finish your tawa you come in this area behind Maqam Ibrahim this area Read your two rakats, drink some some water, then come slowly, slowly, slowly in this area. Stop here, just stop here. 
and do a ninth kiss before you go to the mountain. So eight kiss, you have already done it. So just stand over around here, facing towards that area, and just go like this, Bismillah, Allah, Akbar, and kiss that, and that is going to be your ninth kiss for Hajar Aswad, before you start your Safa Maru. And then you go towards the Safa Mountain, stop here. Make dua, after that you stop. You walk normal pace, this is where you run, and then you walk all the way you come here. You stop here. Face towards the Kaaba, you won't be able to see the Kaaba from here, but you will know where the Kaaba is because of the Musalla directions. And then you, 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 you make Dua, and after that you walk again back, and then you jog. So you have to jog both ways, this way and this way. So you jog here, and then you come here, you stop here again. So every time you stop, you have to make Dua. So from Safa to Marwa is one round, Marwa to Safa is two, Safa to Marwa three, Marwa to Safa four, Safa to Marwa five, Marwa to Safa 6, Safa to Marwa 7. So you will start from Safa, you will end at Marwa. Okay? Don't do that. Safa to Safa is one round. What a lambe ho jayenge. Understand? So make sure that, you know, you start from Safa, you finish at Marwa. These are your seven rounds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of you, inshallah. After that, he's shaving your head. Now, brothers, shaving is an easy thing. You just go to the barber shop and shave it. Make sure you go find a barber shop, you'll find so many people outside as well, asking you, Baal katne hai, you know, and you might just sit on the road and start cutting your hair, and suddenly what happens, the police comes, the guy might run away. And then what? You're gonna look like Mr. T. So make sure that you need to understand here <coughs> that <coughs> Halak, there's no question. Sisters, you don't have to do Halak, or you might get a place in Star Trek. There is no such thing as Halak for sisters. So halak is only for brothers, okay? So, uh, brothers, trimming is a machine. So machine can be, make sure that it's evil size. All of the hay is should be in one size. Understand? Now you need to understand the importance of it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did one hajj and four to three umrahs. Every time he shaved his head. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, shall we do shaving or shall we trim? What did he say? Rahim Allahul Muhallikin. May Allah's mercy be on those who shave their head. He said, what about trimming? He said, Rahmallahu muhallikin He said, again. He said, what about trimming? The third time he said, Rahmallahu. Fourth time he made dua for the trimming. So look at the emphasis he's giving for those people who shave the head, not the beard, the head. Understand? So this is importance Allah's message Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving. So brothers, we need to understand that. That's good. Trimming, I told you, it has to be even. Every head should be in one level. Okay. Sisters, I mean brothers, you will find this shop. These brothers will come to you. Make sure you go in the salon especially and they will cut your hair. Don't go to anyone else. And make sure you spend the money. You give 10 riyals, 5 riyals, whatever the market, whatever they charge you, give it. Make sure that money is also part of your ibadah. Because you're still in that process of the ibadah, you will get the reward of the ibadah as well. So every hay which will come out from you, you will get that much reward inshallah. That's why I always tell you, brothers, don't shave your hair, don't cut your hair before you go. Leave it. Let your hair be buried in that space, you know, Mubarak land. Understand? So at least, at least you've got your hair on you. You're going to go there, they'll be shaven over there, and they'll be buried in that land rather than here. So think about this thing. Sisters, you just have to cut your 1.2 centimeter, take your hair, and that's how you cut it. Okay? Somebody can cut your hair as well. Uh, a, a, a next sister can cut you as well, a husband can cut you as well, so you can do it yourself as well, doesn't matter. So this is the ruling of sisters, they can, they, they can cut their hair as well. Okay. Now Alhamdulillah, we're coming to the end of Umrah, what we'll do is, I'll just show you some pictures, and then we'll have a short break, and after the break, inshallah, we'll take you to Hajj, okay, inshallah. So this is the crowds, brothers, you see the crowd in Mecca, this is how it's going to be. Whenever you go for namaz, this is how it's going to be hajj time. So many people. But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great. 1400 years ago, alhamdulillah, so many times people have gone for hajj. And they always say there's never ever shortage of food. Understand? Never ever shortage of water. Understand? They had a festival a few weeks ago here in, 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 near Stafford. 
and they were queuing for water. There was shortage of water in England. Understand? And here, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, that Allah feed them with fruits. Understand how old it is? You get every kind of food over there. Alhamdulillah. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeds everyone. Alhamdulillah. This is the time that we, you'll see the crowd people going for namaz. You know, they are reading namaz, you see. If you don't go early, then you'll be reading outside. This is Juma time. Think about it. Juma time. It's not it's Jami Masjid. You know, many times when I read my namaz in the other masjid, I'm passing by here. And, and at, at two past two minutes, two, two as well, I'm seeing people running to the masjid. Understand? And sometimes at five past two as well, I've seen people running. When I could hear near the traffic lights, the khutbah is going on. Subhanallah. This is the emphasis we give to Juma. We need to be early for Juma. So here as well, don't give last minute or you'll be reading in your hotel. Understand? So because I've seen that. People just came out from the hotel last minute and they had a shower and they came out and said, Juma Panne Dare. And basically they had to read just outside the hotel. And that was 25 minutes walk from the haram. Understand? And they were reading outside. So Juma is going to be packed. So you need to be 9 o'clock outside your hotel and straight to haram. That's when you're going to get a good space in the haram. <coughs> oh. Optional tawafs. You can do as much as you like. There is no Raman, there is no Ittiba. When you do normal Tawaf, make sure you leave the two Rakhats. Extra Umrahs, you can do that as well. Uh, you know, you have to go to Masjid Aisha for that. Janaza Namaz. Every Namaz you'll find in Haram. After every Namaz, there's an there's a alarm, there's an announcement. As-salatu ala al-mayyid. So you'll find in Haram as well both. So what you do, don't start the Sunnah. Wait. The Imam is going to do Janaza prayer. One Janaza prayer you read, you get the reward of Mount Fahad. Now you are in Haram. Multiply that into 100,000. Understand? Multiply that reward into 100,000. Understand? So imagine, don't miss your Janaza prayer. Learn the Janaza prayer as well. They read it according to their fiqh. Their fiqh is humbly fiqh they follow. So they will read according to their fiqh. That's why they only have one salam. Because you're following them, so you only do one salam as well. Okay? Our announcement will be made, so, and, and, and then you wait, don't, don't press sunnahs, and then janazah, but with one salam. So this is why it is janazah prayer as well. Okay. Another thing I want to advise you is time for salahs. Make sure you check them as well. Never put anything in front of you while reading namaz. Yeah, you know when you come to Jamia Masjid, you put your glasses there, you put your phone there. Don't try that in Mata. Understand? Or oh, it will be crushed. So make sure you don't put anything there. Uh, Muhazarat means this is the praying salah next to a woman is not allowed or behind the woman as well. Farah salah. Make sure you be careful about these things. Juma salah. Try to go early in haram. This is Masjid Aisha. Masjid Aisha. Now, the first umrah you did, you put your ihram in Heathrow Airport. But whenever you do umrah while you are in Makkah, you'll have to go to Masjid Aisha to put your ihram. So what you do is, have your shower in the hotel, put these two pieces of clothing for brothers, Sisters, you also get ready with your little bags, and you also, brothers, get with a little bag. Just little bag means a, you know the chapel bag, and get some few money, few riyals. Go down, sisters. My advice you, please, 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 don't ever travel in Saudi Arabia alone. Don't go in any taxi alone, please. You wanna travel? You travel with someone. I cannot trust anyone in that manner. So for Allah's sake, you want to travel? You make sure you travel with a male person with you, or with. Not even few women together. Male has to be there, please. So they, wherever you go, for Masjid Aisha as well. So what my advice is, few brothers, few sisters together, go down, get a taxi in this way. Ask him to take you from your hotel and bring you back to your hotel. Or from Haram, back to Haram. How much? So what's going to happen then? He will wait for you at Masjid Aisha. Because it only takes you 10 minutes. You go in the Masjid, <clears throat> you read your Torah cards, you make your intention, you read the talbiyah, you come out, you get in the taxi and you come back. It takes about 20 minutes to drive. So you go there and you come back. Understand? So don't pay the money until he drops you back in Haram. But make sure you make that deal. So take us from here and back how much you're going to charge. Understand? They might charge you too much, try to look for another taxi, okay? MashaAllah, I'm glad let's go well loaded, yeah? The time is fine. Okay. So this is Masjid uh, Aisha. Okay, let's have a short break, inshallah. Tarisaf, Tan, Chalagay.